Redis is an open source in-memory data structure store used as a database, cache, and message broker. It also has data persistence, so it can store its in-memory data onto a hard drive. And I really like Redis because it's fairly unobtrusive to your Rails application. So whether you're doing caching, using it for your action cable publishing, or if you're using it with a background processor like Psychic for the queue management, it's something that you can add in or drop out fairly easily without too much effort or code changes. On OS X, you can type brute install Redis, and this will install the Redis server. And once it's installed, you can type brew services start Redis to start the Redis server right now and every time you log in. Or if you're looking to install Redis on Ubuntu on a production environment, you can also install it by sudo apt install Redis server. However, the Redis server that comes with Ubuntu's and to interact with Redis on Ruby, we need to install the Redis RB gem. So just type gem install Redis. And to interact with Redis, we can call IRB to start up our interactive Ruby console. And then we can type require Redis. And this will load up the Redis gem. And then we can create a new instance of this Redis to connect to our Redis server. And we can just set redis.new. You'll notice that it's going to connect to your local host and the default Redis port 6379. And this forward slash zero is indicating which database it's going to use, which Redis does use a numerical list for your databases. And in our case, it's going to use database zero. And you are able to set custom options. For example, when creating your Redis connection, you can specify the host that you want to connect to. You can also specify a different port as well as which database you want to connect to. So using Redis in Ruby is fairly simple. Now that we have a local variable called Redis, we can call set and then pass in a key and then give it a corresponding value. And you'll get a reply OK. We can then fetch this key calling redis.get key and it returns our value. To use Redis as a cache within your Rails application, within your gem file, add Redis Rails. Be sure to run button on restart your Rails application. And under your config environments development RB file, you'll see that if this file exists under your temporary directory, caching-dev.txt, then it'll perform caching. Otherwise, it'll set it to no caching. So if you're going to be using caching, and if you want it within your development environment all the time, we're just going to delete this check. However, you are able to just create that file if you want to leave those settings in there. And you'll see now that by default, our cache store is a memory store. And the memory store is not very good because you're going to be limited to that server's caching instead of having it shared across multiple processes or multiple hosts. So instead, we can call Redis store to change our storage engine. And we can pass in a hash here where we can set the different default options. So for example, we can change which host that we are going to connect to. In our case, we're just going to set this to the local host. We can also select which port we want to use. And this just takes in the port number. You can select which database you want to call from. And if your Redis server requires a password to connect, then you can enter in the password as a configuration option as well. And you can also use a namespace. So if you have multiple applications using the database zero, or if you have different services using the same database, then the namespace will be a good way to be able to segregate those by adjusting the key with a different namespace option. Be sure to restart your Rails application anytime you make a change in your development file. So let's say within your application, you want to have the word of the hour. So we can create a cache for this. So we always pull up the same word for that hour, but then we need to create an expiration so that it expires in. So this key and value will expire within the hour. We then pull the word from our database or just from a random string here. And then we'll just grab the sample. So this block will be cached and it'll expire within the hour. At the top of the hour, a new cache will be generated because the old one would have expired. So just for testing purposes, I'm going to change this to two seconds. We can then launch our application, and in the console, we can call Redis CLI Monitor, and this will create a running log of what's going on with the server. So I'm going to refresh. You'll see that it tried to get the value, 
and it saw that it was expired, so it set the value. If we run this real quickly, you'll see that we get several gets once we refresh multiple times because that value has not yet expired. So if we refresh again, you'll see that it had expired, so it sets the new value again. If we refresh several times, we see that it every now and then will get the set meaning that it has expired, but every attempt before that, it did successfully get it from the memory cache. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.